This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back. I told you we'd come back, and we did come back, and it's our flagship energy show at, at 4 p.m. every Wednesday. So exciting. Maria Tomei, host, co-host with Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi there. She's a big part of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, which makes this show happen. And she arranged for Lester Ng to be here. Hi, Lester. Hello, Jane. I knew, Hello, you'd, say, I knew yeah. you'd say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, he is the Director of Sustainability at AHL, which is Architects Hawaii Limited, one of my favorite, actual favorite architecture firms, which is in, uh, what do you call it, Guardian, Pacific Guardian Center down on the Mackay side there. And every month they put on the Harvard Club, Harvard Club, you've been there, Harvard Club speeches and all that stuff, yes. programs, and we go down and, and, and we tape that. Okay? So we really like AHL. Yes. We'll welcome uh, all the groups that David Miller brings in. <laughs> yeah, okay, right, right. Yeah, David Miller, he brings them in. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so Maria, can you get, that's not a proper introduction at all. Uh, beat me with a wet noodle. Okay. But well. why don't you make a proper <laughs> introduction over here for Lester? All right. So this summer we're focusing on sustainability, climate change, adaptation, mitigation. And when we were looking for what we ought to talk about, um, we got a recommendation from folks in the climate change area saying, hey, you got to do buildings. You know, you got to talk about sustainable design. You got to call Architects Hawaii. So we did. And so that's, that's how we uh, got Lester to come on the show. So I yeah. want to thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you a question that occurs to me. Is the title of the show is Design of Sustainable Buildings. And yet here we are on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. So in your view, can you explain the connection? In terms of the building being sustainable? Well, energy. this is an energy show, Lester. I mean, <laughs> this is like you get on the wrong plane, what? Yeah, so energy is a huge issue for us um, uh, for design professionals, especially in Hawaii, because we know that that, that cost is, is so much higher than the minimum. And so um, throughout the years, we always uh, got a sense about you know, how we design the building uh, to make sure that we use less energy so that our clients, our, the occupants of our building, do not have to pay a fortune mm -hmm. for their monthly bills in terms of energy usage. Um, so, like in the, in the past, we do a lot more siting, using a lot of site to, to, to provide a lot of that. But now, since the codes are uh, written so that we have to do that anyway, so we're, we're starting to get towards a, a point where we're going to meet and exceed all of those uh, sustainable code requirements. Architecture is changing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And sustainability is now with a capital S. Well, sustainability, the way that we see it is, is uh, inseparable from, from architecture. Uh, it becomes one and the same, uh, and it becomes uh, what good design uh, is in terms of for the built environment. You're in the right time and place, aren't you? You've lived your whole life for this moment. Yes. <laughs> and now you can talk about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Comes out of the closet. Okay, so that means, Maria, go down the questions. Okay. Lester, let's, we're going to go down your slides. There's going to be chock-a-block starting right now. Yeah, so Lester has some beautiful buildings to, to show us, and so I wanted to invite him to um, talk about um, what Architects Hawaii does. Yeah, so um, Architects Hawaii, is, uh, we're now known as AHL, so Architects Hawaii Limited, uh, previously that's what we've known. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary design firm. Uh, we specialize in large and complex projects. Uh, our expertise uh, include um, hospitality, um, commercial retail, government, and civic work. Uh, we also do high-density residential as well as transit-oriented design development. Um, and we, we are a local firm. Uh, the, 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 the company was founded in a garage in Waikiki. Perfect. 72 years ago. So having, been, right? yeah, having been in business continuously for the last 72 years, uh, a lot of what you see out there are AHL projects. So we're getting a, a little, yeah, a little so these, showing of yeah. these projects now. Huh? Yeah, so these are some of the, the, the projects that we select uh, you know, in different decades showing what we're... That's the Moana with. Hotel. Yes. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So different than uh, in the medical school. Yes. So one of our biggest uh, core uh, is um, 
medical uh, clinic design. So we, we did the, the Japson, uh, the School of Medicine there. It's a very nice design, that one. And then these are uh, uh, example of some of the military work that we did um, throughout, uh, not just in Hawaii, but also in Guam and, and, and Japan. This is up in um, um, Schofield. Mm -hmm. Camp Smith, sorry. Mm. This is the uh, Windward Community College. That's very nice. And this is Windward Community College? This is the interior shot of the Windward Community College uh, that we just finished maybe about three years ago. Yeah. And this is, you can stop right here a little bit. Um, so uh, this is one of our latest uh, lead project. Uh, this is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful project. Um, it is the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific uh, up in Punchbowl. Uh, so if you have a chance, just drive up there and, and just uh, look through the, the building. This is what the, the essence of design and sustainability is all about. So uh, here, we, 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 it, is, uh, it got us a LEED server certification. That is the uh, um, uh, middle certification under GO. Uh, but what we did there was to make sure that we we minimize the footprint of the, the building so that we don't disturb the land uh, as much as possible. Uh, we make sure that the building is, is uh, in a scale where it's appropriate to the neighborhood. Uh, and if you drive up there, you see it's that- It's a very quiet neighborhood. Yes. And, and that's, a, that's a joke, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you know that neighborhood, this is outside of Punchbowl. Okay. And within Punchbowl, that's even quieter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. Can we look back at that picture? Because I want to ask you about that picture. So <clears throat> what makes... So we, we um, the lead, if you're familiar with lead uh, uh, checklist, there, there's a whole series of points where you can get you can get points for um, uh, energy consumption, water usage, daylighting, um, um, uh, views, et cetera, et cetera. Here, we, we sort of um, uh, apply all of that. So one of the biggest thing was uh, when we have uh, uh, windows or opportunity for windows, we make sure that all the rooms, uh, over 90% of the rooms have daylight. And uh, by doing that, we are not using any energy any more energy than we need to during the day, uh, and they don't operate too much at night. Is it air conditioned? Yes. You get uh, solar cells on the roof? Yes, we have uh, on-site renewable energy, so that's uh, always a basic requirement, but what we do normally on our project is find ways to go above and beyond what's required so that it helps offset the energy use for the building, the occupants, so that it saves them on energy consumption. Is it net zero? It's not net, quite net zero. No, ba no batteries in there? No. no. Yeah. So it's connected to the grid? Yes. Uh, you have to because of the operation that, that is required for, mm -hmm. for the functionality of the project. Yeah. So, I mean, is that, uh, sorry, I, I, no, I'll no, stop you're good. No, this is good. Minute, this is good. This is the, right on topic. <laughs> the university has got some buildings already. I mean, it's got an initiative to do net zero, and it's already got some buildings that are net zero. I'm yeah. impressed with that. Yeah. Um, but how do you achieve that? And do you think that net zero buildings will be, you know, the course in the future that, that clientele will come to you or you will suggest to clientele, let's do a net zero building and, and, and achieve it? Is, is it? is it within marketable pricing, you know? It's, uh, it's not yet uh, on two, two fronts. Um, I was hoping when LEED comes online maybe uh, some years ago, I was hoping that that go the route of you know, accessibility becomes the required normal of, of design uh, uh, standards. It hasn't reached that, that quite yet. Uh, and then the cost of, of, um, of sustainability is, is gone down dramatically, but it's not at a point where everybody can do it. Uh, so we, we're, we're there, but we're not, we still have a way to go. That's, that's a, and it's a market process for an architect. I mean, I suppose I could come into you and say, Lester, look, I really care about net zero. I want to tell my customers, my clients, my students, my faculty, you know, my, my public that this is net zero. I want to be able to tell them that. And I don't care if it costs more, but how much more? <laughs> That's difficult to gauge. Uh, we have data from um, the U.S. mainland, uh, anywhere from uh, 3 to maybe 8 9% of construction costs. 
attribute to, to the cost of such making the project sustainable. In Hawaii, as you know, land costs a lot and labor sort of you know, fluctuate uh, quite dramatically depends on the cycle of the construction uh, movement. So uh, we have been gathering data, but we don't have a pinpoint in terms of uh, its overall cost uh, in terms of the, the, the project. Mm. Okay, but I'm sure this issue is going to come up. More yeah. And more. So typically, if if the mainland is around three to eight percent, we're we're a little bit slightly higher than that. It's not that much. You know, even if it was ten percent, it's it's really not that yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, for the the joy, the pride, the sense of achievement, the sense of harmony. Not not only the the not only can you talk about it being net zeros or sustainable. Uh, it's good for the environment, it's good for your bottom line because it helps you save uh, money and it, it helps you use less resources. So it, it, you, you're helping the environment by being sustainable. Yeah. Okay, let's go with more pictures, right? You want to have 200 pictures you want to show? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, so these are uh, some more shots of the, the, the uh, National Memorial Cemetery. So this one, if we can stay here, uh, the way that you drive up to the to Punchbowl Memorial on the, the opposite side of the hill, there's resident uh, residential area that sort of slope up the hill, and we want to be a very good neighbor in terms of designing this building so that it doesn't block any of their views. So in the front here, you only see a single story, and then we don't we, we make sure that the roof is is low enough so that everybody on the back side has. View. And then on the other side of our building, where it starts to slope down, that's where we have mm. an, and one more additional store, uh, floors to, to accommodate all the functionality of the, the space. Mm. Yeah, there you see. So here on this side, we, we maximize the, the, the southern uh, exposures uh, where we have a lot of daylight, really good daylight. Uh, and that's when you see all of the, a lot of the windows there. And then to mitigate the, the, the sun uh, exposure or the heat gain into the building, we uh, uh, attribute a lot of the, the sun uh, shading device such as spin so that it, it blocks a lot of the, 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 the sun, the heat gain. Same one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Dramatic yeah. roof line there. Yeah, so yeah. these are the, the fins that I was talking about. Uh, when the sun is low uh, in the horizon, it would block a lot of those heat that can penetrate the building that make the building hotter, make you use a lot more energy. So we're trying to mitigate that uh, at, at the skin. So aside from the sustainability aspects, could you comment on the aesthetics of this building? Yes. Um, so aesthetic, as my role title is called Design uh, Directors and Sustainability, uh, we're, we're very, um, we felt that Design aesthetic is, is, is one and the same as sustainable uh, design. Uh, sustainable is, is what makes good design happen. So sustainability is beautiful, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So in terms of, <laughs> in terms of it, uh, uh, form is function kind of thing. So uh, a lot of time when we attribute a lot of uh, uh, sustainable elements into the building, it naturally makes the building much more beautiful because you can talk about every aspect of the, the, the building's being functional and has a purpose in terms of making the building so perform much better. Serves as a common denominator, it yes. integrates all yeah. the elements that not, way. Not like a lot of uh, decorations where we, we sort of uh, stick on kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, nothing's stuck on, it's all part of a plan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, more, more pictures. I'm really getting interested. In <laughs> yeah. 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 So here, uh, I think these are some examples of uh, some um, recent uh, projects that we did. This uh, have been symphony. This is another uh, high density residential uh, uh, development uh, at the outskirts of Kakako, uh, not within the, the, the main Kakako. Can you talk about the, um, the history of this building, about switching it from facing this way to facing that way? What were the considerations there? Yeah, so um, we, a lot of time when we're giving a site, we, we do site analysis, which means that we have to uh, study the, the sun angle, the wind, the, where, where the wind is coming from, uh, where, where we can site the building so that it, it minimizes the, the, the heat gain and maximize the, the, the wind uh, uh, penetration so that we have cross ventilation. So for that particular site, um, 
there are two things. Um, one, uh, the city always uh, uh, sort of suggests us to use a Malka Makai orientation. It wants to preserve view channels. Yes, yeah. and that's we that's important uh, because we know that standing at Punch Bowl, we we want to be able to see the ocean. So that's that's sort of what drives it initially. <laughs> and then we look at you know whether uh, that's going to have a, a massive uh, impact uh, based on the, the the sun as it travels across the sky because we don't want to have the the, the board side of the building being. Uh, facing east west so that you know you <coughs> keep gains all the time and then that that makes your your unit or the, the interior of the building much harder and so you have to use more more energy to to, to crank up your ac so we want to uh, eliminate that so you wanted it north south Malcolm mckay as much as possible and did you get that from the city not a whole lot but then we're able to to creatively uh, study the way that Ward Avenue uh, lined up with, with uh, the punch bowl, and we're able to, to, to persuade the city to give us a, a little bit leeway. I think there's 13 degrees of, of, of rotation <laughs> of, along the Malcolm-Akai axis that we are able to, to, to convince them. That you know, and it's, it's commentary on, on all of architecture that it's not just a matter of planning, it's not theoretical, it has to actually get down to the bedrock and and be convertible into a tangible object. <laughs> Certainly, you have to deal with all the government agencies and the, the finance people, and uh, you know every every single profession you can think of. And only then do you get an actual building. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes it work out. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maria, you want to try to wrap this into into a break somehow? Sure. I think um, design can design is beautiful when it's sustainable. And a lot of the function that you can put into the building is also aesthetically pleasing. And it may cost more, but I'm interested in hearing more about the savings that you might get as you operate the building. Because sometimes you're building it and then you're done. Other times you're building it and you're going to continue being there and paying the operational costs. And how happy are the occupants of the building is also an important part of how good it is over the long run. So I look forward to that when we come back. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Lester, too, I can speak for him. Yes. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Okay, we're back. I told you to come back. This is the best part. Okay, Maria, where are we? What are we, what are we focusing on this part of the show? Let's we're go. We're talking about the people who are going to be in these beautiful buildings. And, or, you know, are they going to be miserable? Are they going to be happier? What do these sustainable buildings do for the occupants? Yeah, so um, when, when you touch up last, uh, you mentioned how, what's the saving? Um, there are codes in place where we have to, to follow in terms of the, the um, our values. Uh, the roof has to be a certain uh, uh, thickness and, and um, our values so that it blocks the, the heat of the sun uh, and it's similar with the walls. So by doing that, we're, we're minimizing the heat gain into the building. Uh, so that, you know, keep the building cooler uh, so you don't have to use as much energy uh, to, to, to cool it down. And so that gives you a level of comfort that, that you, you need to without spending a whole lot of money. Uh, the other aspect of sustainability is we make sure that we have enough daylight uh, for the, the occupants. Uh, um, like the, the example that we showed uh, earlier, 90% of the, the, the occupied space have uh, daylights and views. So that makes you a lot more comfortable. Um, uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I look out the window with a good views, it just makes me happy. Um, 
and uh, research have shown that you know by by daylight um, productivity is, is, is higher yeah. uh, and especially in school um, um, students uh, be, be able to learn much much better so the level of comfort and uh, and uh, the, the, the the comfortability factor in all other occupied mm -hmm. space uh, uh, is much higher uh, than a normal building yeah I remember a study once where they had a store and half of it was daylight and half was artificial light and they sold more <laughs> from the stuff that was in the daylight yeah. side. I remember uh, <clears throat> visiting the first uh, apartment that I, I was thinking of, of purchasing. Um, when I walk in, uh, the daylight was so dramatic that, you know, it almost made me make a decision right there because yeah. it, it just makes you feel so much better by, by having that the room bright and uh, yeah. uh, nicely lit. Yeah, yeah. I remember a condo was downtown here where they had um, they set it up so that some units got the direct heat of the sun in the afternoon when it was hottest a good view but it was really 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 yeah. smoking hot and those were not the appealing those were not the popular units the popular units were, were the ones where it was facing the other way and it was cool. Yeah. I guess that was the mountain view in that case. But so sometimes you have competing considerations. And some owners, builders, or rather residents, you know, might have different views about different competing considerations. Yeah. So how do you please everybody? Yeah, so in Hawaii, um, when we design buildings, particularly in the hospitality uh, uh, area, ocean view, always demand a higher premium. Mm. If you look at a hotel where you stayed, they always list ocean views yep. as more expensive. So a lot of people prefer the, the ocean view. Maybe their visitor, they don't have to stay there tonight, uh, like weeks on end to, to experience the, the heat in the afternoon. Um, so we do have uh, people who, who like that aspect of, of the units being uh, on the ocean side, but then they have to live with the fact that they're gonna be in the afternoon sun. Um, myself, I like the mountain views. Um, I like it being cooler so that I don't have to use that much more energy. But you know, like if you think about ocean views at night, it's just black. And then the, uh, the mountain views, we have it's residents. It's much more fun, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. But this raises the question of air conditioning. I asked you before about that. There's some buildings, you know. Back in the heyday, um, they were building lava walls, open, open lanai's, um, uh, window structures where you could open it up and the, and, uh, the roof would allow the, the air to come through. There was no need for circulation. So many buildings had this. No need for, cir for air conditioning at all. Now, especially in taller buildings, which I agree, you know, we need them to house people, um, everything is air conditioned. Um, it's not, it's, it, it costs more. It requires more. It's more expensive to build uh, and to uh, operate and maintain all that. So wouldn't it be better, Lester, wouldn't it be better if we could go back to open air? Uh, you know, I mean, um, open the window in your office building. Oh, my God, they haven't done that in decades, <laughs> right? <laughs> open the window in your office building. Let the air come through in, in condos, who knows? Uh, or is that gone forever? No, absolutely. You're right in terms of uh, using the, the natural environment to help us uh, uh, make our uh, habitable space much better. Um, I'm going to have a project later on, a picture showing um, uh, what we're working on, a uh, housing project out in my, my Ely. Uh, we're using exactly that. We we're, we're make sure that when we site the building, we, we're sited so that uh, it take a full advantage of the trade winds. And then we use uh, landscape to, 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 to block it so that it, it's in the shade most of the time. Um, when you talk about high rises, it's a little bit more difficult to do because um, the, the, the quarters, uh, we're, we're, we have uh, difficulty in terms of bringing cross ventilation into. Um, one example that, that, you know, recently the Marco Polo fire, mm -hmm. um, that sort of have uh, people. Um, sort of left the door open and, and the wind just, just spread the fire. And the code is trying to avoid us doing that, uh, those situations to occur. Uh, but when we do the smaller scale projects where we can have units that have both 
front and back windows, and that's when we were able to open them up and have the wind go through the, the unit so that it, it's much more comfortable and you, have, you don't need to use any air conditioning. Are people willing to go along with that, or do they want air conditioning? Um, good point. <laughs> uh, we, we can do uh, as much as we can in terms of, you know, uh, setting the, the project up so that it takes full advantage of the natural environment, but people will, will do what they yeah. want. When they if you have air conditioning and windows that open, you have a, that's the least inefficient, yeah. I yeah. mean the most yeah. inefficient yeah. way to do it. You, you can train people to, to, to behave or change their behavior or think of the, 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 the uh, energy use uh, mm -hmm. a certain way, but it, you can't force. Yeah, maybe you have to give them a short course. Sure, you know, but sustainability 101. Yeah. The, the biggest incentive is the, your monthly electric bill. So, uh, you know, in my own house, uh, I have all the window opens all the time, so that I don't need to turn on the AC. Yeah, yeah. Maria, can, can you take let's just through a lot of more pictures so we can? Yeah, see some I more think project? there are a couple left. Okay. So let's let's okay, take let's a look at the more. rest. Lest we, lest we not see Lester's pictures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the project that I'm talking about. Um, it's been two-story, um, so a very low scale. We don't have to deal with a central corridor so that we don't have to worry about uh, um, um, you know, smoke or flame spread in case of a fire. So each unit has front and back windows, so uh, winds can come through and just you know, cool the, the, the entire uh, space down. I think yeah. there might be one more. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Here's the last one. Yeah. So, on on a scale uh, like this, it's much easier to 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 do that those sustainability concept uh, compared to a high rise where we have to stick with more conventional uh, by providing some mechanically ventilated uh, quarter. This would be appropriate when the land is cheaper. Yeah. For example, the neighbor islands, hopefully, you know, yeah. the, the, the land would be cheaper. So we're starting to see a lot of these projects, uh, not in the urban area, but further out in the west side. Um, so where we have a little more land to, to be able to do this type of uh, density. Well, you mentioned, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I'm going to turn this over to you. But, but you mentioned that um, there was a, a, a return to Hawaiian values in architecture most recently. And then we had a period of, what I'm going to call it, scramble <laughs> for t 20 or 30 years. But now hopefully it's, 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 it's going to be better. It is being better. The homes that are being, and buildings in general, are being designed and more faithful to a kind of common denominator that is more Hawaii. But my question for you is where are we going with this, Lester? What, if, if I asked you to plan a building that would be, quote, sustainable in the marketplace, not necessarily with regard to energy, but sustainable in the marketplace in general, and, and would, would retain its sustainability for 20, 30 years from now, uh, what would it look like? What would you think about in designing it? Well, the hottest topic right now is resiliency and sea level rising. As you know, um, the climate is changing rapidly. Um, the way that we've been um, mitigating this or, or planning for, for this type of design is pretty much just raise our building about three to five feet uh, because to... to what, on stilts? Uh, on still or on, on foundations where we, we know that, um, the, you know, get it out of the floodplains. Uh, or the project that I visited in, in Boston, they designed the ground floors to be completely um, what they call uh, uh, wet. Disposable. Yeah, disposable. <laughs> so that the flood water just run right through yeah, and yeah. It's, they're fine with that. So that might be the, 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 the path to move forward. Yeah. But we can do all of that with our built environment, uh, particularly the buildings where we control. Um, the harder part is the roads. Um, how are we going to elevate that to get it out of the... the, the, the That's got to be a city problem. Yeah, so that is a huge issue that, um, you know, we, we haven't been able to wrap our brain around. Right, but this is something you yeah. think about. Yes, what, all the time. You're building now for the possibility yeah. of the yeah. Now, it, it's not true, but the rumor that you're going to build buildings on pontoons. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a good idea. You heard it here on the yeah. <laughs> Because, um, as you know, um, land is, is limited here. Um, uh, we haven't seen it, but um, we see uh, a lot of city in Asia where they have to go into the ocean to reclaim land. 
Um, so that's not always good. So instead, I've seen projects from students and a lot of uh, uh, researchers, they, they make launching, you know, like in the ocean, so that, you know, floating city kind of thing. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> Jay thought he was making this up. <laughs> yeah, it was making it up, but hey. You, well, the point, I guess the point is it's sort of an arbitrage of ideas. You see something in Asia that could be useful here, take a look at it. And we are leaders. We are certainly leaders in this area in, in sustainability and resilience. Um, you know, that can be used somewhere else, too. It's a sort of a global, global arbitrage of ideas, and you're in the middle of that. Good for us. Yeah. Is uh, AHL going to open an office somewhere else? <laughs> have an office somewhere? We else? had offices in, in Hong Kong before um, we don't anymore, but yeah, okay. we, we want to concentrate all our effort in Hawaii. Okay, well that may not be forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maria, take it from here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. We saw some beautiful pictures of actual stuff that's built. I love it when things have been built and you know you can actually see the final product. Yeah. Um, and then hear about what went into some of the design elements as well. Um, one thing we didn't really talk about is the connection with the transportation mm. side of things. Um, so just a very quick question. You know, a lot of folks are using bicycles and they might have, you know, ve wheeled vehicles that are smaller. Is anybody thinking of making it so that you can bring your bike towards your condo unit but not have to drag it in and get the carpet all dirty? <laughs> you know, a little <laughs> mini garage for your electric scooter or that little you know, these little devices that we might have for that last mile from the transit or from the bus yeah. to your home. Um, is that, does anybody ever talk about that or is that still out there? Well, AHL, our office, do have storage for, for bicycle storage and scooters and I've seen surfboard in there. Oh, good, even. good, good, so, good. So uh, yeah. we encourage our staff to, to ride bikes or use other uh, yeah. forms of transportation, transportation yeah. other than their, their car. So we provide that and we incentivize the, the, the use of, of other forms yeah. of transportation. And that's what helps you know, in terms of you know, getting the, the traffic jams off our streets yeah. and that's related to pollution and all of that bad stuff. So yeah. we, we're, we're heading towards that. Because if we want to have space for the buildings, then we can do some of that parking and you know, all these other yeah, um, the, hard, hardscapes. And, yeah. Oh, okay. The yeah. city mandates uh, uh, quite a bit of, of bicycle parking now, mm -hmm. so I think that's a good thing. Yeah, sorry to talk about digressions. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did want to thank you for coming and sharing your, your recent successes and your, some of your views of some things that might be coming along in the future. And I hope we'll be able to have you back soon talking about more of your projects. It's a moving target for sure. Yes. Yeah, Lester, no pressure on you, but we're looking to you, to AHL, to build our new state and to build our state so that everyone likes it, everybody, all stakeholders like it, so that it's beautiful, resilient, sustainable, um, and cheap. <laughs> <laughs> cheap. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you, Lester Ring. Great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Thank you very much.